Hello and welcome to another episode of Top Deck, the series where we take a look at some of the leading TCG deck lists. And on today we have Alex Everson's list, uh, which he took to a recent UK regional making top 8 with an Orcus deck that does not feature any single danger monster in here, which is really, really interesting. Uh, it's quite an unusual take on the deck um, in the way that he's built it. So let's get into the list and then we'll follow up with all the additional information. So Triple Ash, uh, Double Four Mud Skipper. So if you haven't seen this card before, um, it allows you to copy the name, attribute and type uh, of any Link monster from your extra deck. Um, which is when what, in, when you're using it for a link material. So that's kind of crazy. You can use this to copy your Galatea um, uh, or your, even your Lingesu, uh, Longesu, and then use that as the uh, Orcus card, which is really quite insane, to be honest. Um, and then apart from that, we've got a triple Neo Space Connector, the one Dolphin, um, Skeleton, Harp Horror, Nightmare and then the typical starter of Sky Blaster, one of each of the Phantom Knights, and then the Trickstar engine, so one of each of the monsters, triple field spell, double terraforming, which means that it's more likely for him to pull the Babel, because essentially you want to have trap plus field spell uh, by the end, ideally, otherwise you get the field spell and get the trap following that. Um, and then triple core by triple instant fusion. Uh, we, we don't see this featured in many versions of the deck, but there's a very nice uh, option that comes with this, which is that you can summon Winder. Uh, so Instant Fusion would normally destroy the Winder during the end phase, and you'd have to just deal with that. But because you're playing uh, Orcast, you can leave your Dingesu up on the field and use that effect to protect your Winder, uh, which means that your opponent is essentially going to be locked out of the game, which is a really strong way to open uh, especially given that you can set Double Fog Blade on top of that um, and potentially could have a Crescendo, uh, although that won't be live, so you'd probably more likely go for the um, Babel. Or you can actually, um, yeah, that seems like the, the best way to do it. Go for the Babel um, and then see what happens in the next turn as you start abusing all of your um, Orcus spells and uh, Orcus effects in the grave. Um, and then apart from that, pretty standard stuff, Triple Twin is becoming a um, staple, to be honest, in this deck, given the existence of the mine. Um, then the other target for the instant fusion is the Restrict, Double Ding, 1 Vora Sword, Triple Gala, 1 Cerberus, Double Mermaid, 1 Phoenix, 1 Unicorn, 1 Longesu, and 1 Rusty Bodish. Uh, apart from fusions, there's nothing especially unusual about this extra deck, it just gives you enough utility and attack power. Uh, for the side deck, triple Lancia, triple uh, Pancratops. We don't often see it, but we've got triple Kaiju in here as well. It's very applicable within the format. Uh, it's just that we don't often see it within um, decks at the moment, although perhaps it will pick up popularity as the format develops. Triple True Nate, um, even more spell and trap removal. Um, and of course, you only have to use a single card for this, since he doesn't have the dangers in this deck. You're not getting so much utility out of the discard of your Twisters, so you would otherwise be going neg. So it's quite nice to just have a, a spell that you can drop like this, and it doesn't punish you in time, unlike Red Reboot. Uh, and then a triple impermanence. So a very um, sort of simplified list compared to the other Orcas lists that have been popping up around the place, but a very nice take on it with the Instant Fusions and the Four Month Skippers uh, coming in very strong. Additionally, actually, um, you can also just copy one of your Nightmare cards with the, the format and then use it to summon the mermaid. So it's, it's uh, essentially another copy of um, Ibli, which you can play in the deck too, which is very, very nice. Um, and it has a pretty interesting effect that if it is sent to the graveyard, you can add one of your level 5 high Cybus monsters from your deck to your hand. I don't believe there are any uh, Cybus targets for this. Um, so that part isn't super relevant within this build. On to the rounds then, so uh, seven round events, and we have five wins and two losses, uh, making his way into Top Cup because uh, of the um, pairings. So, uh, first up, Salamangrate, losing the dice roll um, and winning 2-1 is generally how it goes. Um, you tend to win 2-1 just because at some point they'll be able to take a game off you with the hand traps or setting up a, a stronger board. Uh, again, it's Thunder Dragon Pure winning 2-0 despite losing the dice roll and um, going up against the Titan because obviously the, the uh, other versions of Thunder don't run the Titan, so you don't always expect it to be there. Um, Mech Knight invoked. 
120. Um, losing the die roll and getting uh, hand traps with no material against the connector but still managed to win out. And then against Mystic Mind Burn, losing 1-2 here. Losing the die roll um, makes it very difficult to compete in a format where Mystic Mind does exist with a monster effect deck. Uh, and then Altergeist 2-0, losing the die roll again, Sky Striker 2-0, winning the die roll this time. And finally Salamangrate, uh, going 1-2 here, so lost in the final round. Um, Dweller was just too strong. Uh, he was able to play through it in game 1, but the opponent then top decked Foxy into Fusion of Fire. Uh, and then in game 3, Dweller was too much for him and sent the resources too far back, so Alex wasn't able to push through that, unfortunately. Um, in terms of the siding, so we've got siding, I believe it's based on the rounds that he faced, yeah. So Thunder Dragon Pure, obviously the impermanence has come in, so you can deal with the Colossus if you need to do any searching, etc. Um, and then for going second, Lance here and Radiant also putting in a lot of work. You can uh, potentially remove some of the floodgates or the titans that may get in the way. Um, for Sky Striker, no changes going first, but for going second, there's a lot of hate that can come in. So triple Pank, triple Trunade, and triple Radiant. That does mean you have to side out a lot of stuff. He's actually taking out all of the connectors and the dolphin here. Um, the normal summon will just immediately get Widow Anchored anyway, so it's not super relevant to keep that up. Um, whereas if your half or something does get hit with a, a Widow Anchor, if it does get linked away, then you're going to be able to get some use out of it. And uh, if it doesn't, then you'll be getting it back, so you can just make use of it for your own link summons. Uh, versus Salamangrate, triple impermanence as a way to deal with the Dweller, but taking out the Twisters here, not super relevant in that matchup. They will typically go for the Dweller, so you just need ways to out that really. Um, and then for going second, the Pankratops and Radiance come in as well. Uh, and then for Mech Knight Invokes, impermanence obviously hits the, um, the Alistair very hard. Uh, and then Pankratops for going second, although that is kind of unlikely with the way that uh, Invoked is built at the moment. For Mystic Mind Burn, um, going first and second, it's exactly the same siding strategy. You're not trying to hit them with the Fog Blade Floodgates, so you just put in your Hatred Nades and your one copy of Impermanence because you need uh, a fourth side in, really. Um, and then for Altergeist, no changes going first, but for going second, you have plenty of back row hate with uh, the Hatred Nades and the Pankratops. He said that overall the event was really good and it was a nice place for him to be able to test the Orcas deck. He decided to play it because he wanted to see how it would fare against the meta. Um, in terms of the hardest and easiest matchups, he says that the hardest would have to be Salamangrate because um, they can dwell in you really consistently, otherwise the deck shouldn't be too hard to keep in check. Uh, also Mine because Mine is just a nightmare to deal with. The easiest matchup is Sky Striker because you can play through 90% of their first turn board and if you go first control the game is very easy. Um, relative to other decks, uh, he said that he liked the engages because he'd lent them out, um, so he was forced to play the 4-month skipper for the one card mermaid. He wouldn't choose to use it in the future um, because he'd rather just have access to the engages. Um, relative to the other decks then, he was mildly hindered because he's not able to just make the mermaid without using the normal summon, but it seemed pretty good. Um, to, and worked out for him in the end just using the format skipper, although obviously Engage is superior. Changes he made to the deck, he would put something in to negate the Dweller because it's just too much of a problem, it's very consistent to be able to see it. And um, the most influential sets uh, for the deck are absolutely Dark Neostorm because Dingus is so powerful, um, and in terms of upcoming sets that he's interested in, potentially whatever could feature the Needle Fiber. Um, Shoutouts go to Mason for winning the event, uh, the Plymouth Lot, Ollie, Chris and Tim, Matt Mills, who is apparently uh, still bad, uh, Sam Goin, Team MFM, and his two cats. Uh, as additional comments, Konami, please, bad Mystic Mine. Thanks for watching this episode of Top Deck. If you have any comments or suggestions that you would like to make, leave them in the comment section down below. Check out the description for details of how you can get involved. In this series, you can enter by a voice interview, or instead you could just send all of your information over Facebook Messenger or anything like that will be absolutely fine. If you want to see anything in particular from the upcoming series, then be sure to get in touch, and I'll see you guys in the next video.